in Somalia, rain has not fallen for two years. By June 2011, the drought had reached catastrophic levels, with over 12 million people facing starvation in what was described as the worst human crisis in the world. It was reported that every six minutes, a child was dying. And more than four adults were starving to death every day in a land choked by famine and drought. By early August, hundreds of thousands of these thirsty and hungry people had swelled the refugee camps beyond their capacity. A Red Crescent volunteer, called Mahmoud, listened to the story of a refugee, Amna Ahmed Ajo. These are her words, as recorded by Mahmoud. I grew up in a beautiful village in Somalia, where the hooves of our animals danced in the dust. And every day there was laughter in the air and hope in our hearts. Then the war came. And there was drought. And it did not rain for so many seasons I could not remember the smell or taste of rain. It was as if God forgot about us. The wells had run dry. We were running out of water. I managed to squeeze the last drops from the earth. I heard stories that in the south there were wells that still had water. So I packed my bags and promised my children that life would be better. It broke my heart to say goodbye to my beloved mother. I knew deep inside I would never see her again. And then we began to walk through the dry dust. The sun beat down on us without forgiveness. Our mouths were parched. The children started to cry. By the first day, we had drunk all our water supplies for the journey. By the end of the first day, my daughter could walk no more. She had no strength to move. In the last gasp of sunlight, my beautiful daughter breathed her last breath. I buried her silently. I was numb, feeling a terrible pain that only a mother can feel. But I knew I had no time for grief. We had to move on, and I had to be courageous. 
Beside me, my son was growing weaker. He was brave. He tried to walk and keep up. But he fell to the dry earth. And I knew he could walk no more. I sat with him in the sunlight watching the nightfall. I knew he was going to die. I was powerless. I sang to him and stroked his hair. He was so brave, my oldest boy Yusuf. I promised that I would never leave him, but that night, he left me, and I was to bury my second child in the dry dead earth. My heart was heavy, my feet were heavier. I knew my little baby was not going to live another day without water. I had been walking for days and days, so many days I could not remember. Then I saw a hut. Inside there was a woman. She was weak from the famine. I begged her to watch over my child, my little Shukran, so I could continue the search for water alone. As I left the hut, I heard my baby crying, screaming for me. Then suddenly, I came across a well. I filled my bottle desperately. I began the walk back to find my beloved son. But I ran out of chances, and I had run out of time. I found out that my son had died the day before. It was as if the heavens broke and I cried tears. Tears that ran down my face like rain. Like rain that had never come to our land. Because in our world, we cry tears for rain. Amna disappeared shortly after this encounter with Mahmoud. No one knows what has happened to her. Tragically, as the famine engulfs more areas, thousands of women each day are leaving their villages to brave the road of death. <laughs> 